Chapter Seven. When Phileas Fogg comes to the rescue. First of December. Their journey continued across the mountains of Colorado with no other surprises, at least for now. In three days and three nights, they travelled more than two thousand two hundred kilometres. The passengers were soon familiar with the delays. These only seemed to worry Passepartout. Phileas Fogg continued to play cards with Mrs. Aouda, while Inspector Fix slept like a baby, his head going up and down with the gentle movement of the train. Passepartout correctly predicted more problems. He was right. A few days later, a group of Sioux Indians attacked their train. The Sioux rode their horses along both sides of the train. The passengers heard their battle cries before they arrived. Many of them knew what was happening. The horses of the Sioux moved faster than the train, and several arrows flew towards the train carriages until finally the train slowed down. Some of the passengers prepared to defend themselves. The Sioux jumped on the train. Their leader tied up the train driver and his assistant together and threw them off the train. Then they went towards the other carriages. They're coming towards our carriage! Shouted Mrs. Aouda. Passepartout bravely hit one of the men over the head with the back of his gun. Then he left the others to see what he could do to stop the train and ask for help. We need to stop the train, Passepartout told another passenger. Maybe we can ask for help from a nearby town. There are soldiers at Fort Kearney, a few miles away. Replied the man. Good, said Passepartout. We'll stop the train, and someone can go and look for help. He knew that there was only one way to stop the train: to climb under it. He opened the door and went under their carriage. Then, with his great strength, he pulled himself along the bottom of the other carriages. Until he finally found the engine above his head, he separated the engine from the carriages, and the train stopped. They were almost at Fort Kearney. The soldiers at Fort Kearney heard the cries of the Sioux and the sound of the guns coming from the train. They quickly got on their horses and went to see what was happening. The Sioux were surprised to see the soldiers, who were already shooting at them from the distance. Let's go," said their leader. "But first, take that man who is giving us so much trouble." The group rode away on their horses, taking two passengers with them, and the brave young Frenchman who was trying to save them. When the battle was over, Phileas Fogg could not find Passepartout. The Indians took him away," said a passenger. "Poor man, they'll kill him for sure. I'll find him and bring him back." Dead or alive," replied Phileas Fogg. Mrs. Aouda looked into his eyes. He was her hero. He truly was a wonderful person. We can save these people, but I need help," Phileas Fogg said to the soldiers. He left the fort with thirty soldiers and their horses, and followed the direction of the Sioux. Mrs. Aouda and Mr. Fix waited for him at Fort Kearney. It was incredibly cold, and the wind was blowing hard. Inspector Fix and Mrs. Aouda sat in the uncomfortable station waiting room, trying to keep warm. From time to time, they looked outside at the snow. The darkness of the night started to become morning, but she still could not see Phileas Fogg. Not long after the sun came up, they heard the sound of guns in the distance. They stood up, worried, and looked out of the windows. But there was no battle, just the sound of celebrations. A group of people with Phileas Fogg in front were coming on horses towards them. Passepartout and the two other passengers were sitting on the horses behind. They looked safe and well. Mrs. Aouda ran to meet them. Inspector Fix waited outside the station. Maybe he's not so clever after all. He decided. But we must return to England soon, and then I can arrest him. You're all back safe. This is wonderful, Mrs. Aouda cried. 
Everyone, except Passepartout, looked happy. Yes, we're safe, but Mr. Fogg will probably lose his bet because of me, said Passepartout. He left them to their celebrations and went to the station to find out about trains to New York. When's the next train to New York? he asked. The next one leaves tonight, was the reply. But we're already over 24 hours late. If the train leaves tonight, we'll be too late to get the boat. Passepartout felt very bad. He wanted to be a hero, and Phileas Fogg came to rescue him. At that moment, Inspector Fix returned with a man he was talking to outside the station. This man says he can take us to the station in Omaha in his sledge, he said. We can take a train to New York from there. The man had a strange sledge with sails. He explained to them that he often took passengers from one station to another in the winter when the snow stopped the trains, and that with a good wind behind them, they could go a lot faster than the train. Phileas Fogg agreed. They had no choice. They all climbed onto the sledge. The sledge travelled very quickly across the icy flat lands of the central states. The passengers were very cold, and with an icy wind blowing in their ears, they did not speak for most of the journey. They were in Omaha in less than five hours. When they arrived, they thanked the man, and Phileas Fogg paid him well. Fortunately, they found a train to Chicago and then to New York immediately. They arrived in New York two days later at 11 o'clock on the 11th of December. They quickly went to the port, but the China, the ship taking them to Liverpool, was not there. Fogg did not look surprised. He looked at his watch. They were 45 minutes late.